A controversial homeless encampment ban gets a second reading today. We'll tell you what will happen if it does indeed pass, when it'll go into effect, how it'll be enforced as well. The situation has just gotten so much worse. The county could declare a state of emergency today over sewage contamination in the South Bay. What that would do. I absolutely love raising canes. The local man camping out for the chance to win free food. And we start off the morning with some clouds yet again, but those clouds will be no match for the sun. Once it comes out, we'll be talking another day of warm temperatures and how warm we could get by the end of the week. It's 6 a.m. on Tuesday, June 27th, and you're up with CBS 8. We begin with new details on a crash that killed three Marines from Camp Pendleton. Some tough news to bring you here this morning. This happened in Los Angeles on Saturday morning. The fiery single vehicle crash on the five in Downey left a total of four people dead. CHP says the car hit a guardrail and slammed into a wall, splitting it in two. You see all the damage there. All the victims sadly pronounced dead on the scene. Two of the Marines were assigned to Combat Logistics Regiment 1 1st Marine Logistics Group. The third was assigned to the 15th Marine Expeditionary Unit. No names have been released at this point. The crash is under investigation. Our other top story here, the city of San Diego's controversial homeless encampment ban is up for a final vote here today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Dana Marie McNichol filling in for Netta Arampour. Now, the ban has been met with fierce criticism, but if approved today, it will take effect in 30 days. Now, CBS 8's Chris Grove, he's live along Harbor Island right now with both issues making their statements, Chris. Yeah, good morning, Eric and Dana Marie, and this is also coinciding with a safe sleeping space that's opening up on 20th and B that allows for the city to go ahead and get this in place 30 days after its vote. So again, that was a bit of a caveat. Remember when this first passed uh, again there in the past year with that five to four vote. Now, critics of this ordinance have been pretty loud and pretty vocal ever since it was even first proposed, and you can see them there. They were protesting over the weekend. They claim that there are simply not not enough shelter beds or sleep uh, safe sleeping spaces available here throughout the city in order for this to be enforced. Now, when and if this does indeed pass, it prohibits tent encampments in all public spaces throughout the city if shelter beds are available. But that caveat would go away if those shelter, excuse me, if those encampments are in places like parks, canyons, schools, transit stations, or homeless shelters, there would not need to be any shelter capacity for officers or other first responders to go in and enforce this ban. Now, that was a big question. How will this be enforced? Well, according to Mayor Todd Gloria's office, people will be given three chances to accept shelter. And if they don't on the third encounter, they will be arrested. Mayor Gloria says that over the next several weeks, they will be training first responders, everyone from homeless outreach workers to police to make sure everyone understands how this ordinance will be enforced. Now, of course, this will be something that will be read and voted on later on today. As for that safe sleeping site, again, 20th and B. You can read more information on that as well as this encampment ban by going to CBS8.com and clicking on that story link. Eric and Dana Marie. Chris, thanks for that. Now to another huge issue for our community this morning. The County Board of Supervisors discussing whether to declare a local state of emergency over sewage contamination in the South Bay. That's right. Chairwoman Nora Vargas and Vice Chair Tara Lawson Reamer, they will introduce a policy which would direct staff to ass assess economic impacts and also pursue all available funding. They also want the White House to declare a federal state of emergency. For decades, contamination from the Tijuana River has closed beaches in San Diego. Listen to the numbers. According to the U.S. International Boundary and Water Commission, since 2018, more than 100 billion gallons of sewage have entered the U.S. through the Tijuana River. 35 billion gallons have crossed the border since December 28, 2022. The situation has just gotten so much worse because of what's also happening. Now it's not just one source of pollution, which has been for a long time, which was the Tijuana River Valley. Now we also have the second source of pollution, which is the sewage coming just straight up the coast from the broken sewage treatment plant down at Punta Bandera. So it's double the source of the problem. The Board of Supervisors meeting begins at 9 a.m. This morning, there is a growing memorial in Encinitas for a 15 year old who died after an e-bike crash last week. The, the family of 15 year old Brody Braxton Champlain Kingman announced yesterday that the teenager sadly had passed away. 
Now, this crash happened on South El Camino Real, just south of Sylvan. The Sheriff's Department says he changed lanes and collided with a work van. This deadly crash comes at a time when the city is already working to promote safety and strengthen rules for e-bike riders. Encinitas is considering making it illegal for people to give rides to passengers on their handlebars. I see this happening all the time in my neck of the woods. Offenders could be ticketed or would need to attend a bicycle safety course. Seems like a good idea to not sit on the handlebars or the luggage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably. I think it's a good idea. You know, people drive a little crazy around here. The Encinitas City Council will already be voting uh, in favor of approving the new guidelines. There will be a second reading tomorrow. Today, the La Mesa City Council will consider a proposal to raise trash hauling fees. Now, the average rate for EDCO services is about $305 a year. The rate hike would also add almost $25 more annually. On average, businesses pay about $1,400 a year, so rates would go up about $100. It may not seem like much, but some people say it really does matter. Every time I turn around, somebody's trying to get in our back pocket. If it isn't the television, if it isn't fast food, it's our utilities, now it's trash. It never stops. We've reached out to Edco, but haven't heard back. On its website, Edco says people over 62 years of age with a household income less than $30,000 a year can qualify for a 20% discount on their services. And this morning, the city of La Mesa is working to fix an issue with its parking meters. We told you about this yesterday. The QR codes on them were leading people to adult websites. Now, the codes are supposed to be uh, for parking and helping people do that. But yesterday, our crew saw a parking enforcement officer covering up the codes with a Sharpie. The city tells us it did reach out to the vendor about the problem. They clarified the parking app needs to be open before scanning the QR code. The city also said they're getting replacement stickers. Well, what would you do to get free food for a year? This morning, a man is camping out in front of a new Raising Canes in Rancho San Diego ahead of today's grand opening. Arturo Gonzalez is his name, and he has been there since 6 yesterday morning. He plans to be out there until they open up at 8 a.m., so under two hours now. He wants to be the first person in line, and he is there right now. Gonzalez will be, because of that, getting a special gift basket and a chance to win free food for a year. Gonzalez says he was sold on canes from the very first bite. I thought, oh, it's just chicken fingers and toast. And then when I took my first, very first bite, I was absolutely blown away at just the quality and then the friendliness of the staff. Hey, yeah, see him out there with his pink tent. The first 20 customers at the new Canes location at 8 a.m. again will be entered to win the free meals for a year. Maybe he's also marketing with uh, the I, I, Potentially, Dream I think he just King. really likes Canes. I thought, hey, I, he's right. It, it's, it's quality and a year of free chicken. Here's That's the a lot. We have of a lot money. of quality chicken shops in this town. Well, and it's created quite an argument. It has well, and we wanted to maybe not to stay away from the argument part, but we wanted a poll. We wanted mm. to see what you guys think. So we oh. uh, recently just tweeted this out, um, and we asked the question to you: What is the best chicken shop in town? Raising Cane's, Chick Fil A, Popeyes, or other? And when you when you fill out the other, please retweet because we want to know uh, what you guys are saying out there. Um, so yeah. Looks like right now in the lead, dead uh, tie. Chick Fil A and Popeyes are tied. As a moment ago, it was Popeyes in the lead, so some Chick Fil A folks Ooh. just jumped on board. There we go. And it's surprising there that Raising Cane's not doing super impressive on there, fourteen percent. So we'll wait. There we can get more people, make it a little bit more, uh, you know, uniform, and see what people have to say. But I'm curious, have people said have what their others are? Dave, yes. Dave's <laughs> hot chicken. Someone weighed in on. Okay. And then David in National City said that the. Uh, Golden chopsticks, the pepper, salt and pepper wings wow. there are really good. Okay. So, yeah, keep on telling us a, a royal mandarin is another one that someone says uh. is, a, is very good too. So Is Raising Cane's very popular here in San Diego? Are there a lot of locations? No, I don't think this so. This is the second one. Yeah. I think okay, so up. maybe yeah. it just needs to grow in, po in exactly. popularity because I've never had it, so, so I can't even vote. Raising having gone to college in Orange County, it yes. is very popular in Orange yep. County. Okay. People, it was always an argument amongst my fraternity brothers and I of like, should we go to Chick-fil-A? Should we go to Raising Cane's? I always favored Chick-fil-A. But I felt Chick Fil A slipped a little bit, so I'm I'm looking to okay. just explore raising yeah. canes. So maybe we may have to have an outing. What a heated debate! Field trip. I know, right? This, I know. this is what we're dedicating more and more time to, and I love it. We're gonna have topics like this every day. Now we okay. need to talk about sauce next. <laughs> oh, that's a whole nother one. Yeah. Okay, it's 6:09 right now, and let's take a look at what's going on outside. It is a partly cloudy start to your day, depending on how far east you are. But if you're closer to the west coast. 
basically west of the five, you're still running into a dense marine layer out there that is slow to burn off. It's going to burn off pretty quickly, though, as we head into 8, 9 a.m. or so, which is sooner than, say, last week and the week prior. Uh, what we expect is that those temperatures are going to peak at the 70 degree range from your coastline all the way to your mountaintops, warming as you get farther east, and then the deserts. Boy, you're going to notice that dramatic climb in temperatures. 102 this afternoon for the deserts. That's just for Borrego Springs. Octail Wells could be at 104 for their forecast high. Cloud cover, again, pretty dense out there, stretching to Ramona Valley Center. Also seeing some of that cloud cover. Clouds will start to break apart pretty quickly into the forecast into that 8 o'clock hour. Current temperatures walking out the door. You are at 59 degrees. Good morning to you in Encinitas. 63 in downtown San Diego. 59 for El Cajon to start off the day. Ramona at 47 degrees and Escondido at 56. And wind speeds. Winds are going to be picking up this afternoon. So. Although we did see a wind advisory expire at 5 a.m. just over an hour ago, we're still going to be breezy. Not exactly criteria level, but it's going to be breezy. 10 to 20 miles per hour from the coast to your mountaintops, 20 to 30 miles per hour. And in some cases toward this uh, evening, we could be climbing, climbing near 40 miles per hour for Borrego Springs. So watch out for those gusty west winds. Let's take a look at traffic now. It's 611 on the clock. Here's a look at border wait times from the CBP website. It is a 50 minute wait right now for the San Ysidro Port of Entry, 45 minutes minute wait at the Otay Mesa port of entry. Once you get into San Diego County, you can head to our website cbsa.com slash traffic. It's got the latest on how your roads are looking on all of our major highways. Back to you. All right, thanks Evan. Still ahead, new audio shows former President Trump discussing secret documents. His response this morning. Plus, keep an eye out for those mosquitoes. The warning about the first U.S. spread of malaria in 20 years. And the number of people who say they're thinking about leaving California.